pleasure to see you all in such a late hour, but and late of the semester because everybody is already just grading or packing the suitcases to go to Europe or Australia or some other nice places. Uh, so the probability of consistency. We can see the question of uh, proving consistency of piano arithmetic. Uh, you know, the consistency is conventional, so no sequence S or formals is a derivation of a contradiction of piano arithmetic. This looks like this 1930s discussion or even 20s. By means formali formalizable in piano itself. And of course there, is, there should be a lot of talk to, this, to, to explain what, what we mean and to put it into context. And I will speak about I will speak about three contexts, historical, foundational, and mathematical. There are more, but so just, we don't have time for more than that. Uh, the Hilbert consists of program, that's the immediate comes to mind. And uh, the whole idea of this program was, of course it was a big program, we'll speak about a certain fragment of it which concerns uh, proving consistency by limited tools, or trusted tools. So, to have, uh, so first I have to, uh, to describe a secure trusted part of mathematics and according to Hilbert it was something around the contentional elementary number theory which relies only, well, the first uh, intuitive basis, purely intuitive basis of concrete science will immediately leave this kind of philosophy and will try to be as uh, specific and as pragmatic as we could. Uh, but in particular, these signs, uh, there are enough examples to give us the idea and to give a generic definition of the uh, affinitistic objects. Sequences of strokes, symbols, formulas, proofs, which can be syntactically manipulated. Uh, the goal of Huber's program is then to give finitary proofs that there is no derivation of contradiction in major mathematical theories. And uh, the, our case study will be piano arithmetic as the, as the fair representative for good reasons. We have a good understanding, it has good models, and uh, we have a lot of experience working on them, and uh, it's common knowledge. Well, presuming anything else you'd look for would be, you know, you first want to check that that's consistent Absolutely before right. I build up something so more complicated uh, like yes. geometry. I'm uh, to open all my cards because I'm not playing them close, open all my cards. My goal is to uh, attack one single, mm -hmm. what I call misconception, mm -hmm. that the consistency of piano arithmetic cannot be proven mm -hmm. by the tools which are formalizable within piano arithmetic. And this, is, uh, this can be done with reasonably easy, so at least within this talk, and it's, uh, it's already it punches the hole into the armor of uh, the impossibility uh, uh, conception in the foundational mathematics. And then uh, we'll, we'll see how much we can extend it automatically, or we need more work, and of course the answer is of course we need more work. But at least this one, uh, if, if I make this one work, then uh, the, this, this I'll be more than happy. This is the, the limit that my ambitions are there. So, uh, finiter objects. By Hebrew, the domain of contentional number theory uh, are the signs, uh, the equation of numerals. In particular, it was him who spoke about the sequence of strokes. One stroke, two strokes, three strokes, and so the one is representing one stroke representing zero, uh, two strokes representing one, and so on. Uh, in, uh, in several occasions, of course, he himself and uh, other people, for example, Hilbert, uh, the Gödel, sorry, uh, they um, generalize it to a reasonable extent. And in particular, in his Cambridge lecture in Massachusetts of 1933, Gödel speaks uh, in this context about objects for which we can have a finite procedure of generating all their elements. So, which is a reasonable uh, reasonable description of what we're talking about. Uh, the 
finitary reasoning of finitary reasoning. So the finitary general proposition of uh, uh, is uh, a hypothetical judgment that comes to sort of something when a numeral is given. This is a very key point for the whole thing because when we'll uh, convert everything and arithmetize everything, that instead of a numeral we'll get uh, uh, a numerical variable which carries no information except that it is something which obeys the laws of piano arithmetic. And then we cannot stop it from spilling over to non-standard elements. And then you can do nothing about that because non-standard elements, they don't have any finite information to work with. So the key point here is something uh, that numeral is given. That's how uh, this, uh, this constructive approach um, suggests to treat consistency statements because there are a special case of hypothetical judgment that we come to assert when a numeral is given. So again, jumping a couple of steps ahead of myself, I would say that this hints that we have to consider consistency rather as a scheme with the numeral as a parameter. Rather, sorry, rather than a formula with the, act where the parameters are represented by a variable and the universal quantifier bound in this variable, and then you're in the mercy of all the model theory of piano arithmetic, which is, as we know, is completely untamed business. Most of the models are non standard, where everything is non constructive, everything non computable, I mean, this, even the elementary operations. And most importantly, there are no real derivations behind this abstract element. So this is the hint, although, that we'd better consider consistency as a scheme rather than as a form. Okay, could you yeah. just explain that? I mean, I can, I mean okay, if you can There'll be more time to explain, but I can, I can do it by request. Okay, please. No, no, I, I think of consistency as saying, you know, zero is not equal to one. Oh, yes, absolutely. Right, this so that's a formula. Zero equal to one is a formula, yes, it's, but it's, then you have to say, uh, okay. Zero is not equal to one, whatever, but uh, so now... Well, that's not that you have to talk about proofs of... of They're both formulae. Right, the formula, but then you have to talk about what about... Consistency uh, formula, do, do, do Right, right, so that's a good, so, what, so what's, now you're bringing in, you're saying a number, a number to, to power, never mind, okay, fine. Okay, it's, uh, it's not just a small answer, it should be a story, wait a couple of slides, uh -huh, okay. you'll get the full account of it, I you'll promise. be happy. I'll be Trust right. me. Okay. I promise. So, finitary proofs. <clears throat> Hilbert uh, accepted operations defined by printed recursion and proofs using induction. Uh, they're finitary acceptable. Hilbert himself never claimed that only primitive recursive operations count as finitary. And moreover, people notice that he himself in attempts to prove all the, the consistency proofs, use operations which turned out later uh, to be non, non primitive recursive. So it's. But Tate, Bill Tate, uh, argued strongly that infinitism coincides with primitive recursive reasoning theory. But everything, basically, the induction scheme is allowed only on primitive recursive or primitive recursive kernel statements. Uh, Kreisel uh, gave another account, and uh, uh, he said that piano arithmetic is a good candidate for a bound for the vessel to carry all the finitary tools. And uh, since our focus will be not on the Hilbert program, but on one particular thing, which is proving consistency of PA by means of PA, then uh, what we do, uh, but we don't want to lose the link to the Hilbert finitism. So we basically we adopt as a working assumption, we adopt that we'll speak about 
reasoning by means of piano arithmetic, if you believe that this is what Christ meant. This is a kind of a special reading of Hilbert finitism, when the set of finitistic tools is the set of tools uh, uh, which are um, uh, expressible in piano arithmetic. In particular, we, uh, we are free to use induction on all formulas, not only on primitive recursive formulas. That's, that's the key point of the whole thing. But if you don't like this connection, uh, then it's fine with me. Because I want to do it is my working definition is I want to I consider reasoning by means of piano rhythm. So I allow this regardless of whether Hilbert himself would consider it kosher or not. I don't care. What I care is I want to prove this, and this will already suffices to uh, disprove one major misconception about the foundations of. Okay, just looking, reading carefully your thirteen of what you do allow. Yes. You said finitary objects, arbitrary first order formulas, and postulates. Axioms and rules of inference. Sure. Yes. Okay. And, and finite, what is again finitary object? Uh, these are objects which are syntactic objects which are finitely generated. Uh -huh. For example, numerals, mm -hmm. formulas, they're finitely generated mm -hmm. by simple primitive recursive procedures, derivations, mm -hmm. axioms, these kind of things. So we don't need much more. Mm -hmm. And also, there are, if you want to concatenate them, then it's also primitive recursive operations, yeah. which you can prove everything about. Right. And so your formulas are all finite things. Absolutely, yes. So we're, not, we're not right. venturing into infinite proofs or, God mm -hmm. forbid, yeah. models right. like. Right. Not nine finite, the nine finite, like we need to take a transfinite induction. And no, no, like no, 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 nothing. So uh, right. in this respect, we're, we're faithful to the original idea. The right. only thing, okay. I want some freedom in, in the proofs. Uh -huh. Basically, not only, not as, uh, not as much in the proofs, but in counterexamples. Okay. So I need this freedom. And the game, this is good enough. Because in this respect, it's not to support Hilbert's finitism, the, the paper, but the sure. paper basically to um, to correct some misconceptions and foundations. Did, did, did Hilbert live to see Ganson's proof? Oh, yes. Hmm? And, uh, uh, yes. And did he say anything about it, or he just... Well, uh, it's, it's not an easy question, because uh, I don't, I didn't see anything in written, but uh, Hilbert, especially in, in uh, co-authorship with Bernays, was an extremely prolific author. So I really rely on the experts who provide good, good, uh, good quotes. Uh, but uh, when I'll do the real, I'll, read the, I'll write the real paper, I'll probably have to read all of this myself. Mm -hmm. Hilbert 1943. Yes. So. Kenson's work is 30s. Very late 30s. Yes. So yes. Might, Hilbert might not have known about it. Mm. Uh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Time wise, it's consistent. But, well, but at least that means you have a small bounded subset of Hilbert work to look through for it. Yes. <laughs> bounded through, yes. But this, uh, I'm an old person, so my. my my, uh, I'll just address this question to so Will Zig or someone who mm -hmm. really knows everything about Hilbert, mm -hmm. Hilbert writings. Uh, I'll ask an expert, real expert. So that's really okay. Uh, the next key point of the whole thing is the so-called formalization principle. Why does the, how the, the Gödel second incomplete theorem comes into play? The formal derivations are finite sequence of formulas. Go to arithmetization numerically encodes those derivations. Fine with this because it's basically the, uh, very efficient. Well, yeah. primitive recursive encoding both ways. You take a, you take a syntactic finite objects, you cre create a good number like the, the, the numeral, or you take the numeral and you recompute whatever uh, syntactic objects is behind this. Mm -hmm. 
So there's no problem on this, so you can speak about formulas or derivations, you can speak about Gödel number, <coughs> it's the same thing. Mm -hmm. However, then, uh, uh, Gödel, but not him, it's a tricky thing, Gödel, uh, but this construction uses numeric quantifiers to represent universal properties of derivations, mm -hmm. and uh, um, uh, this includes the, to produce the consistency formula con t, which is a theorem. There. And that's, the, point, that, that's the, the, the first answer to your question. Uh, awesome. For all x, because this, it's a pi formula, it starts with an a, with the mm -hmm. universal quantifier. For all x, x is not a code of a proof of a contradiction in t. Mm -hmm. This thing is an arithmetical formula. And the contradiction in t, if t is arithmetical style theory, then the contradiction is 0 equals to 1. Uh, which is a contradiction, but the whole thing is a pretty, pretty long primitive recursive construction about codings and everything. But it starts the whole, the core is primitive recursive, but this universal quantifier, that's the one which actually spoils the garbage. And as I argue, this is the only suspect in the whole story. If you find a way to circumvent it, to, to, to come around and to return back to the Hilbert original desiderata about the, uh, the, the, the consistency proofs, you'll be just fine. Anyway, so by G2, uh, piano, if consistent, doesn't prove this particular form. What's G2? G2 Gordon's is second. Gordon's second and oh, yes, okay. Okay. yes, G2. Thank you. Uh, to connect you to, to the real question of probability or probability of consistency, we have to rely on what is now called the formalization principle, FP, which in a loose formulation says that any finitary reasoning may be formalized as a derivation in PR. Mm -hmm. The principal father of this formalization principle, uh, the, 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 the father, is probably von Neumann. I'll I'll tell you the story. And uh, in addition, we have to trust the adequacy of representation of mathematical consistency of T via this arithmetical version. But uh, both of these assumptions will be questioned. I'll show that they don't, they're weak assumptions. They're not really justified. So uh, nobody questions the validity of G2. Gilles second complete theorem is a perfect perfect example of a mathematical achievement is the greatest theorem of uh, one of the greatest theorem of math the whole mathematics. We're talking about the spin, the interpretation, mm -hmm. or uh, the general perception, which... So you're saying, what is that, what is that, yes, the statement is correct, but does that actually have as a con, what does that actually have a consequence for the Hilbert problem? Which numerical, yes, and uh, uh, whether it's four foundations. Right. It's basically, uh, basically the question, can the theory prove, can the mathematics prove its own consistency? And this is a big question because uh, all we're, we're doomed to live in the reflection tower of theories. We accept theory, have no way to prove it consistently, have to believe it. Or if you want to prove it consistency, you have to assume yet stronger, more and stronger and stronger principles. Mm -hmm. that creates a tower, it's called a reflection tower, and which is a completely... Uh, it's a disaster thing for verification, for example. Mm -hmm. The people are crazy what to do, just you verify a thing and then what, what about the verification tools? Mm -hmm. You have to verify them by getting, if you believe in the reflection tower, you have to assume to use tools which are stronger than this one, and then mm -hmm. the, the whole thing collapses. It's not the case. And moreover, uh, I, I published the, version, the first version of the thing as an archive preprint, and almost immediately I got a, a citation from one of the leading computer scientists that uh, cybersecurity needs the opposite of Gödel theorem. I will, I'll, I'll, we'll discuss it at the end of the, at the end of the evening. So it's a big deal. It's like I, I don't want to compare the magnitude of the event, but the Copernicus who argued which uh, which is uh, which which point to take. Uh, yeah. Mathematically, it's, it's an empty, it's a void question. It depends on whatever coordinate system you take. 
and it's just a matter of convenience of certain equations, the equations, but ideologically, if you mean, or methodologically, or conceptually, culturally, it was a very big thing. And that's what I try to approach now. Of course, just don't, don't judge me on this, on this comparison. I just care to, to, to convey that. Uh, all right, so Gödel, this, this is to your own surprise. You see, in his very, very G2 paper, uh, 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 formally design all propositions, then where the complete theories of both theories are presented, officially as a journal publication, Gödel directly challenges formalization principle. Uh, he says that um, The Hebrew's viewpoint presupposes that only the existence of a consistent proof in which nothing but finitary means of proofs is used, and it's conceivable that there exist finitary proofs that cannot be expressed in this formalism. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is not his own system, but he's called system P. So, hey, yes. what, what, does that, what does he mean? Does he mean that finitary is not piano arithmetic? <coughs> Well, finitary, fine, not parsing. There are finitary tools. You can, uh, you can imagine manipulation with finitary objects by effective, uh, by constructive procedure, which is not formalizable inside piano arithmetic. Well, isn't this going back to your previous slide on where you say that you know primitive recursive may not be the same thing? Uh, well, the, 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 this, the, the P system P he speaks about is piano arithmetic. Mm -hmm. It's umbrella theory which covers all which you can imagine mm -hmm. in the thing. So, but he's, he here he speaks about uh, finitary means, and uh, this is the finitary from the formalization principle. This, uh, at certain moment, I will begin drawing ovals, uh, about saying what what class includes what, but mm -hmm. it basically means so far uh, we say there might be the, the, the message here that might be. It's conceivable to have finitary, finitary tools which cannot be expressed in piano rhythmic. Can be expressed in piano rhythmic at least as this formalization requires as a single derivation. Mm -hmm. That's the, 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 we'll make this, this distinction later on. Okay. Just basic computability theory. Anything that a Turing machine can be done can be formalized as, as piano arithmetic? Of course, yes. So, so he's talking about something that's beyond the Turing machine? No. You're, uh, I'll show you uh, where, where this, the whole thing, where you, where the, where, where the scene is committed. The where the crime committed. is committed. Yeah, sure. <laughs> right. well, where the misunderstanding begins, you know, right here. Uh, so, so far, it means that there are some reservations about the Fender, well, the challenges. And of course, Hilbert never accepted the Fitcher principle, or formalization principle, and, uh, in, a, in a pretty strong form, and uh, he has disciple their lives. And basically, it says that the view, the certain recent results of Gödel show that my proof theory, its Hilbert program, cannot be carried out, has been shown to be erroneous. I just wonder what he means by this. But in fact, this result shows only that one must exploit the finitary fixed endpoint in a sharp way for the further, further reaching consistency proofs. So he never accepted this, uh, this interpretation of G2. Well, that might be about noise. Uh, they might be, yes, true, but uh, I strongly doubt that in 34, in uh, the, it is the, um, the introduction for foundational mathematics. Hilbert would allow Bernays to write this. Of course, right. this, is, this, is, this is way too important. It's not a marginal thing. It's mm -hmm. I couldn't find a direct quote from von Neumann. So everybody speaks, it was him, von Neumann, von Neumann. There are some anecdotic uh, description of von Neumann inside his own lectures. When he learned about Gödel proof, he just uh, scrapped all the plan, lecture plans at the beginning preaching the Gödel and stuff. Mm -hmm. 
and thing. And uh, so, but this is a quote which speaks of both Bernays and von Neumann. In the letter of Gödel, unfortunately, I cannot, I cannot get better thing. I just better mm -hmm. the, the official publication. But this uh, is from from uh, a very serious study by Sol Pfeffer uh, about about the whole story. And uh, very nice to go to, as if as von Neumann does. One takes it as certain that any, that any and every finitary consideration may be formalized in the system P, like you, I regard this as no way is settled. One comes to the conclusion that a finitary demonstration of the consistency of P is impossible. But this is this one. Like you, I regard this as no way is settled. That's a very nice. Mm -hmm. But for Neumann does, and this, any, uh, this is a short formulation of the formalization principle. In, uh, in the Cambridge lecture, uh, already mentioned, 1933, Goebbels gives some, some somewhat softer comment. Uh, all attempts for the proof of freedom from contradiction undertaken by Hilbert and his disciples, which have ever been constructed, can easily be expressed in the system of classical reason. And there are no reasons to believe that this would hold for any proof which one will ever be able to construct. So this, uh, this can be regarded as a sort of empirical argument in favor of formalization principle, but however it's, it, it falls short of discussing of peace in depth or in, in, in serious depth, and, uh, and of course endorsing it. It is basically the message, and the, the Sol Pfefferman, I agree with him, argues how to read this in and puts in a social context of the time. Uh, I don't want to repeat this. It's too, it's too long a story, though, very powerful. Uh, this, is, this is like the church Turing thesis. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's true. And so I'm in a position, so my, my fellow proof theorists would say that, hey, I want to, to show this. And so it's like you, you, you're trying to disprove a church thesis, you know, or to produce a procedure which, uh, yeah, well, not, not as bad. But, but still, this is the same category of principles. It connects the formal realm with the real realm. Uh, probability with whatever con contentional uh, I old reasoning. Absolutely true. And that's why this is the, the, the nature of this talk is the nature of examples. Of course there will be plenty of mathematics, but nature of an example, the key examples will be uh, given the contentional proof and uh, argue that it, it should count as finitary. And uh, I clearly argue that it's nothing in this construction goes outside piano, and yet it is not formalized and uh, formalizable as uh, one derivation in the The key word here is compactness. That's what is overlooked in all these arguments. If you insist that the result, that, that consistency is one single formula, then you're bound to, ex to accept that probability of consistency is just proof of one formula, and then, by compactness, it's proven a finite subsystem of piano arithmetic, and then you're basically uh, assuming that proven consistency in piano arithmetic is proven consistency of piano inside its finite fragment, mm -hmm. which is quite mm -hmm. nonsensical, actually, mm -hmm. assumption. From the very beginning, it was a, a, what, I, what I call it, well, mm -hmm. ill, Ill principle, actually. And we'll show that all the counterexamples will play on the thing. So there are such, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm jumping, I cannot resist the temptation of jumping, but we throw off with your smart questions. So, uh, yes, and that's the foundation argument. Uh, it was just uh, one slide I had of myself. Suppose the consistency of, so we're done with historical, mm -hmm. we show that it was not consensus, uh, uh, never been consensus, at least in the early years, and then somehow, some argue that the, uh, the von Neumann point of view prevailed, at least in the public uh, discourse. But uh, Gödel never actually endorsed it, uh, actually took it seriously, because basically that's, that's what he said. And let alone Hilbert, of course, he never said, he said that it's, it's just it's not working. I'm not talking about their lies. Yeah. 
I, I don't think that Gödel ever accepted the Church Turing thesis either. Well, I mean, he. Yeah, sure. Well, the, the, we, may, we, may, we may just uh, count fingers, of course. And he, uh, he, he talks he, about absolutely undecidable things. Yes. Yeah. Other things. And then there are some. And there are some other things which, uh, the other predictions by Gödel, which proved to be uh, not quite correct about proving consistency hypothesis by building larger and larger cardinals. Uh, cardinals. Just this is the most annoying fact for set theory people. But yeah. anyway, so the supposed consistency of piano now go let's get to the real argument. Though so historically uh, we're done, I'm not gonna argue, uh, comment on it anymore in this lecture. So suppose consists of piano is fairly represented by a single form. And that's basically, I repeat my own argument. Say, compie. Then, by compactness, the original question of probability of consistency of piano, piano transformed into probability of, of consistency of piano in a finite fragment of piano. And uh, this is uh, and clearly that five manifests an, an inadequately stronger version of four. Because uh, PA is not finally taxonomizable, so no finite fragment of PA can even endorse or certify all axioms of piano, let alone analyze it, uh, their, their consistency uh, in the context of derivations. So it's not a proof, of course, because they, they might be conceivable some other way around, but um, ideologically, it, just, uh, it is clear that 5 is so much stronger than. That if people would try to sell uh, to sell five instead of four, but they're clearly equivalent, then it would be much, much harder to sell. So, four and five, as they stand on statements. Yes. Um, can you just tell me how I understand your statements? Uh, I understand the uh, cell phone. So, uh, so we, we assume that consistency is represented by a single arithmetical form, one form. Right. Then the probability of consistency reduces the probability of this particular formula in piano arithmetic. One form. Yeah. And each proof is using only a finite amount of axioms. Yeah. And it means that this particular proof is actually proven in a certain finite fragment of piano arithmetic. So if it is proven in PA, it's proven in a Fragment. Yes, given that the consistency is represented by one single form. Sure. Yeah. Then this is for me this is an argument against representing, assuming that consistency is just one single form. Mm -hmm. They might, they should be, and uh, there are some other way around. Why, why is that Because the probability of one single form is always compact. It is always a probability in a finite fragment of pure. Yeah, I've got that. But yeah. why does that mean you can't represent it by a single formula? Uh, we'll show. Well, th this is an argument because this, so far my argument is five appears to be ideologically much stronger than four. I think the intuition is just the next day. Right. You're just PA is not finally axiomatizable. PA itself. is not finally axiomatizable. So if you if you bound yourself, you box yourself in the finite fragment. You cannot even prove all the induction mm -hmm. in, 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 in instances. So you're not using the whole thing, and the, yet you're taking responsibility for the whole thing. Mm -hmm. It's informational. Mm -hmm. right, so you're saying, how could you possibly prove the consistency of, of, of some part of the induction know. principle that you've left out of your axiom? Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it's not finite axiom. PA is not finitely axiomatizable, but it is. Uh, there's a finite scheme. And, and ah, yeah. hey, now you're talking. <laughs> Welcome to the club. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Welcome to the club. Yes. <laughs> okay. Absolutely. So this, and at the end of the day, you'll be disappointed that the whole story actually boils down to some technicalities, mm -hmm. and not the solution to technicalities. The solution is to reveal the thing, but the whole big myth about the Gödel theorem, mm -hmm. which proves in. Uh, Establishes impossibility of proof. So you're saying since we have an action schema, we may need a consistency schema as well. Absolutely. And that's how it works. Okay. Which is perfectly finitistic. Mm -hmm. But you have to be careful because there are a lot of underwater rocks. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I, I think the main argument is all coming. I mean, and yes. I mean, we're, okay. I'll wait to hear what you've got to say about the scheme versus. Sure, absolutely. Yep, yep. But I, I'm not sure that this argument. I'm not actually persuaded by this argument yet. Okay, you can prove that if you can prove consistency, you can prove it from a finite number of axioms. Yep. Um, and the thought seems to be, as was articulated, um, if you're not using all the axioms, you're not speaking about all the axioms. That I don't think follows just because. It, it may well be that there are sentences in this finite fragment which refer to all the axioms. Uh, yes, but not in an essential way, because you cannot certify that these axioms are accepted. Maybe so, but I think this is coming to the scheme versus the sentence with this. Uh, yes, true, but still, uh, if you're firmly in the formulas, then, then you're, you're boxed. And again, I'm not selling this as a proof. I'm selling it as an argument. And my point only is that if in the 30s and the 40s this argument would be properly discussed and uh, properly revealed, that the sale of uh, the forensic principle and the whole Fab Neumann story would be much more difficult to sell. Because it's uh, in, intuitively, this looks counterintuitive. That's what I say. And I, I'm, I'm glad that some people agree. And here's a counterexample, which uh, this, is, this is already in mathematics. I mean, this mathematics, conceptual mathematics, versal, and formal mathematics, but it is mathematics. It's not about also understanding. So, counterexample of FP consideration of PA. I, the, the formalization principle, I, uh, I speak about formalization principle regarding the tools formalizable for reasoning in PA in our meaning and in our understanding, which is, uh, which is good enough for my purposes, as I mentioned, because uh, I'm talking about the, the, the tools formalizable in piano. So any reasoning by means of piano may be formalized as a derivation in piano. This is the thing which I want to disprove. Uh, then piano reasoning, it's assume, we also we assume that each arithmetical formula, we use their formal arithmetical language for bookkeeping. And just when I want to say certain property of numbers, no theory, then I can, I can write a formula or I can say in the usual semi-formal mathematical slang. The prime number using words instead of quantifiers and all these kind of things. I use that, uh, I, I'm just using the uh, the formulas as uh, uh, just uh, for the for exact specification of what I want to say in formula about arithmetic. In particular, if psi is an arithmetical formula, the psi in quotes is the contextual property of natural numbers which is employed by this particular formula. And uh, this is I try to be as accurate as possible because we're talking about different speaking about different levels. Let's consider the induction scheme, induction of phi, which is a standard formulation. I could pick the non-standard or some tricky formulation and make this reasoning more complicated and a little bit more interesting mathematically. But the point is that it doesn't work from the very beginning. So that's why I'm not changing this induction scheme. Mm -hmm. This induction scheme the way it's given in piano. And just a stupid point. The point being that here I have a different one for each formula phi. Yes, first that's the point. First that's, that's the, the second point. order logic I need to have. This and, is a scheme uh, and given and by fees. And ta-ta, this is a scheme. Mm -hmm. This is where the scheme as mm -hmm. conceptually enters the stage okay. for the first time. Sure. Not just mentioning mm -hmm. the king is coming, here's the king. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So now we consider a general contentional mm -hmm. proposition called E, I, and D, capital letters, in the Hilbertian format. Given the arithmetical formula, phi, I of phi is contextual, as, a, as an informal statement about phi. Mm -hmm. So we just read this induction in every way. If phi of 0 holds n for all x, if phi of x holds, then phi of x plus 1 holds, then from these two assumptions, we can conclude that for all x, phi of x holds. That's the thing. So why are there quote marks around IFI? Uh, because IFI, uh, I, ah, 
It's ind, sorry, it's ind, it's a typo. Ind is a specific formula, given phi. I want to read it contentiously, I want to read it as a, as a mathematical statement. So, so sorry. Is this is ind, I, I is ind, it's just a typo. Okay, so what, what's IND? It's not the italicized formula underneath. No, no. IND is this particular formula. This is just sequence of symbols. It's an arithmetical formula right. in the language. Yes. Okay. But then I said uh, I, I read this. I, I read this formula in quotes. I read this as a mathematical statement. In a, it's an arithmetical statement, informally, or contentious, as people say. I just read it. Okay, but you're quantifying into it. No quantifiers. Given I, uh, I D of phi, I D of phi is a specific sentence. Yeah, and but the let's assume that there are no other uh, there are no other parameters. It's no, but the italicized sentence says given any arithmetical formula phi. Yes. So you you got to quantify there. Phi. No, no, no. This is a schema. And uh, read, read this 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 is exactly what I try to st I just. General proposition is a hypothetical judgment when it comes to assert something when a numeral is given. This is the Hilbertian format which I'm using. I'm not quantifying on phi. I consider this as a scheme, as a statement, depending on phi. Okay, well, what you've actually written, I mean, that Italian sentence does contain a quantifier, right? Uh, which sentence? The either, the, the given. Uh, Given yeah, any arithmetical yeah. formula five, that's a quantifier. Well, he means, but it's not a quantifier inside the language that you're using to write your Absolutely. formulas. He's saying it's in his meta language that he's writing a slide in. Okay. When I what, 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 okay when I write when I write I and D, I say the induction scheme holds an arithmetic. Mm -hmm. Am I using quantifier? Yes. yes. Contentially, yes. Yes. I don't like yes. the word contentially, but I'm willing to use it here to annoy people. Yeah. <laughs> of course. Yep. Uh, the level of content, I would absurd. If you want, if you want to stay within the more traditional mathematics, then fine. Yeah. View this as a parameter, and the whole thing is a schema. And then we're discussing how to prove schemes. You know, that, prove that, that schemes. I That's true. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I give to you. Consider it as a schema. I, I would call in the function. No, it's a function that takes formulas. Yes. And phi to i of phi. Phi, right. Takes phi and puts out yeah. it puts out an axiom. It's a function from formulas. Yes, axioms. and can you read in the in quotes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. You take a you take a formula. Okay, yeah, so it's a function from, from, so from formal from, 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 from formal to numbers. Objects, two contentious statements about numbers. Elementary number theory. Fine. No. So basically, you're saying that without going outside the format of proving individual um, sentences, you can't even state the trivial proof that that PA asserts its own axioms. Yep. Yep. And this can we can we just finish the whole thing? Mm -hmm. So this this ID is provable by means of piano arithmetic. I give the proof. You tell me. Where exactly we did, we ventured out piano arithmetic? I would be more than happy to argue with you. And this is exactly this is mm -hmm. this is clearly within the Hilbert's desiderata. That's how you regard general propositions. You give them a numeral or give them a formula, and you argue about. It. I'm talking to mathematicians. So it's contentious mathematical proof this way. So indeed, given phi, assume the contentious statement phi of 0 and that for all x, phi of x implies phi of x plus 1. Mm -hmm. By induction, contentious induction, we can include this contentious thing. Done. But this proof cannot be formalized as a piano derivation by the same reasons. Because it's, if it's formalized by piano derivation, provided uh, then I and D is formalized as a formula, and uh, which would uh, imply all the instances 
logical biolysis and ID should be provable inside, uh, provable in PA, and then because we assume that it's formalized, the bike compactness, then ID uh, and all uh, uh, typos, uh, IDFs are, it's a big deal, are derived in the final fragment. You got the idea. So this is a very basic principle, which if you stick to our rigid format, everything is a formula, then we cannot even prove our wrong tools. So this is a failure of formulation principle in a very nasty way. So and the, 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 I, I like this example because I, I spoke to many leading proof theorists. And I tricked some of them and, uh, uh, temporarily <laughs> in assuming that, well, induction is not provable. And then I say, well, if it, it would not be a friendly discussion in the pursuit of truth, but just a, a political fight in front of certain audience, I would already just order champagne. Because if you assume that you tools cannot prove induction in piano arithmetic, then you're lost. Of course. So this, this is the, uh, it's not the main argument, but it, this is the, uh, the main um, uh, argument to the leading to the main argument, which says that we shouldn't, it shows what's wrong with the formalization principle. If you ask myself, I would say yes, and this is, uh, this is a partial defense of what Mawson suggested. Uh, if you're bound to think about properties as properties of numbers only, then probably you say if you property you if you property you're considering a of x or a of n or a of x is just formulated a priori as an arithmetical statement. And you try to argue contentiously about this using the, the arsenal of piano arithmetic, then whatever you do with this A will end up to be formalizable as a single proof in piano arithmetic. In this formulation, I consider this feasible. And this was actually the basis, I, my guess, for von Neumann enthusiasm concerning this principle. However, if you read the original, if you read the basics, the basics, the, the, uh, the, the Hilbert, he never, in his finitive, he never bound everything in arithmetic. He spoke about finitistic objects in general. And if you look at the consistency of formulation, oops, the consistency formulation the, the, from the beginning, it speaks about which one? Uh, yeah. That was. Mm -hmm. oh. That's yes. it. Ooh, let me see. It's fine. So much more. Uh, so more editing. <laughs> uh, let me. I, I want to find the one which is more obvious. No, it's yet to come. Any final sequences? What? Well, yeah. The original form, no sequence of formals S is a derivation of contradiction. Give me the arithmetization. Mm -hmm. No. This is a combinatorial statement. Mm -hmm. All the arithmetization was imposed by Gödel unintentionally because Gödel proved his own G1. There is nothing wrong with G1 in the interpretation. The first Gödel incompetence theory was powerful too. It really Torpedoes the Hilbert problem, but in a different from a different direction. Mm -hmm. All the conservativity things and decidability things, they're all ruined by the G1. But G2 is not the one which was a bad guy for the Hilbert problem. So this, this is original. There's no arithmetics in there. And this is my answer to you, Nelson. Mm. The original problem was combinatorial problem. It was about finite sequences of formulas. It was not about numbering. And uh, you do two things to make it a number consistency formula. You good numbering, good numbering, fine with this, because it's a both way computable thing. But then you do quantifier. And the quantifier is equal. Yes. 
Uh, given that Godel didn't like FP and Hilbert didn't like FP, is there a reason for why kind of it comes down so strong in the history? Oh, uh, uh, this is a collective psychology. I, I have my own hypothesis, but I, I don't think I'm in a position to really reveal this. It's, it's my own personal opinion. I'm not an expert. But probably that it has something to do with wishful thinking. People like the story. It's a Hollywood story. Yeah. You know, the, the, the guy comes and says it's impossible and uh, stops everything. It's settled. It's not sexually settled, but it's frozen the real analysis of the consistency proofs for years. So it's kind of overreaction. Overreaction. Oh, we should, uh, heroic age, well, that's what they expected. Sometimes people accept the thing because they like it, because that's what they wanted, yeah. what they pleased, I don't know. Maybe just the personality of von Neumann, who was a very, uh, very powerful salesman. And, and Pfefferman, I mean, he spent his, his first thing, there's all these showing... That's, the, that's why I didn't, I kept it, I tried to... Uh, to, to I don't want to insult my dear friends and fellows in proof theory, but uh, when I think that I will, I will become incapacitated after certain years, maybe after certain weeks, <laughs> and then I'll leave, I, 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 I'll take, I will take all the secrets to grave, <laughs> makes me sick either. So I decide I'll speak and then let the community with its entire infinite wisdom decide whether it's useful or not. I want, just I decided to speak out. But this then, yes, but, well, I wish whether Pfefferman was around, George Bullis was around, and other people too. But I will, I'm going to face the music uh, uh, soon. A after we post this. Uh, if you post this, yes, true. Yeah. Sure. I'm going to face. Yeah, I've got to face the music. I will speak. Uh, I'm giving away to talk in the ASL meeting uh, this this Monday, mm. and I'm giving two talks in St. Petersburg, in the earlier mathematical institute in front of all leading pro theorists they invited, mm -hmm. and then a popular seminar on logic for St. Petersburg in Russia, which will be quite a challenge, mm -hmm. as you can imagine. So I'm not hiding. All right. Uh, the, the, the easy thing is nobody has ever gone through Pfefferman's papers to see if he discusses, uh, you know, because they're too technical. Uh, I, uh, I think I've read most of them, all of them, even to the extent that I begin forgetting what I read. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my students say, well, come on, this is Pfefferman. Okay, yes, true, it's there. If I remember right, what Pfefferman shows is that there is a formula that's exceptionally equivalent to prov as it's usually yeah. defined, yeah. such that you can prove yeah. consistency if you formulate it with that sentence yeah. as a single sentence. Yeah. So this is a different <coughs> point. Absolutely different point, and that's why it's the, that's why. And even simpler thing was my Mike Dettelson. He played. He argued that Rosser is the one. It's like some people in, in foundation they say that you're gerrymandering the, uh, the proof predicate in order to make it provable. But this is not what we're doing. We totally, we're just abandoning the idea of arithmetization. Well, the, the, the Rosso, I mean, it's a single sentence, but you don't use omega consistency, you just use consistency. Yes. The Feffman thing is different. He shows that there's a sense which in some sense, yeah. a single sense which in some sense expresses consistency, although Provability is not the kind of canonically defined provability predicate. It's something that's just extensionally equivalent. Because you can't prove it's extensionally equivalent, otherwise you'd be able to prove. Absolutely, yeah. but that's the same story with Rosser. It's uh, consistency. Of Rosser consistency is extensionally equivalent to real consistency, and it's provable. Uh, Vince knows everything about this, and uh, it's just a similar story, but it's a more canonical example. The whole thing, and that's what Mike Dettelson tried to argue that this is a right presentation, but my point is that the attempt to, to box things in one formula uh, are actually doomed. Well, okay, let's, let's go with it. Oh, no, let's go with yes. Now, there's the mathematical argument. We're not there. This is this argument which was the main argument for myself. Because this is saying whether consistency 
Home PA as a formula is the right model for consistency. And uh, uh, this is something which I also managed to, to trick my uh, traditional proof theorist opponents into, into some statements, which were pretty funny. Yes. But then, of course, we, we, we understood each other. I, I value the discussion and the papers, yes. So for a logician, cone T holds in the standard model of arithmetic extension as Graham said, if and only if T is consistent. However, in Hilbert's consistent program, we're interested in probability of this formula. Mm -hmm. Well, in T or say in piano everything, in our case. Hence, we have to, we must analyze the validity of consistent formula in all models of piano everything. Because nobody questions the completeness theorem of Hilbert. If you speak of probability, you have to consider, if you want the semantical picture, you have to consider all the models of the, the assumption. Most of them non-standard. And we know how non-standard model is built. It starts in initial segment is the standard, and then mm -hmm. there are plenty of numbers which are, even if it's countable model, then plus, time, plus and times are not computable, cannot be computable <laughs> functions. And uh, the uh, extension uh, from outside, it doesn't, it doesn't look well ordered because there may be infinite descending chains and the whole story is a complete mess. But most importantly, if you try to decode it back, if you consider this abstract element of a non standard as a code of something, you cannot decode it back with something mm -hmm. which makes any sense. Sure. So this good numbering actually works mm -hmm. only on Hilbertian objects. Mm -hmm. If you have a finitary object, you can convert it into Numeral. If you have a numeral, you can convert it back to the finitary object, but... But, but if you wanted to prove for a statement, it will be finite carry. Yeah. Hence, I can't feed crazy infinite things as inputs. So, in a given non-standard model, the quantifier for all x, because you have to deal with the formula mm -hmm. in, for all x, mm -hmm. which, which is a starting quantifier in a consistent okay. in a code PA, spills over to non-standard infinite numbers by, the same re by similar reasons. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there is no way the standard numbers are not definable mm -hmm. inside the algorithm. You cannot mm -hmm. put the uh, you, you yes, cannot put, put the domain restriction, the, the, the domain restriction for all x which are standard numbers, mm -hmm. because you cannot express. Them. Right, you do, I have to go beyond first order logic. Absolutely, yes. Or you have to assume yeah. if you stay within the first order logic, then uh, the quantitative states mm -hmm. consistency of both standard and non-standard sure. proof codes. Obvious. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to, right, the point is you don't want to say anything about, you know, some infinitely long proof or yeah. anything like that. People try to do yes. it, but it's just, I mean, it's not. But that's not the original, you know. And, and the, moreover, the, if, if we had a nice model with infinite proofs, which would correspond to non standard model, it would be tolerable, but there is none. It's yeah, just mean, a complete mess. I mean, do we even know that we can like unroll the encoding of, mm -hmm. of um, mm -hmm. these proofs like by one step? Because that could turn out to be uncomputable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. At least taken naively, because. What do you mean unroll? Well, just like just like figuring out what was the last step in the proof, you know. I have a proof. Well, please send a proof. Or yeah. yeah. Given a proof code no. encoded by. If it's not standard proof, no. Yeah. Okay. The whole thing is even not well founded, so you cannot. Mm -hmm. sure. yeah. So uh, the con T is stronger than the mathematical consistency of T, which speaks exclusively about sequences of mm -hmm. S of formulas, and such sequences have only standard proof. This is the, it's a very obvious secret, but it was not publicly assumed as a real feature of what's been going on. Now it's even worse. So mathematically by G2, Piano doesn't prove quant P. Nobody doubts this. Quant P is a formula, it's not provable, hence it's an easy argument. It fits in these five lines. There are models of Piano with inconsistent proofs. Mm -hmm. Just because we, if we had a uh, negation, it should be consistent. So there are models of piano with consistent yeah. proof. However, as we as we show, and it can be shown by some 
zillions of other arguments, all such bad proofs turn out to be infinite or non-standard. They're all garbage. All real proofs are consistent. That's what we're proving. And you can show it by many other uh, ways, not constructively, but we show it constructively. So it means that uh, the COMPA is not provable because we are failing to separate real stuff from garbage. Mm -hmm. Since we cannot do it, we say, well, we cannot prove. We cannot live in this room because there are a lot of garbage and we cannot separate them out. Hence, G2 says nothing about real PA derivations, which are all finite, and which Hilbert consistency program has been all about. This is, for me, this is a main argument. And I'm happy to see that this, this, this one actually resonates. People realize that this, uh, this was a myth that G2 actually uh, kills the Hilbert consistency program. And it has anything to do with real consistency proof. All right. So what is the most annoying, because I, I spent my life studying G2 and uh, consistency proof and everything, that's my uh, special. Arithmetization and consequent factoring the informal universal quantifier any finite sequence as from the definition of consistency, the language of PA, therefore making its internalized quantifier, has distorted the foundational picture and made consistency unprovable for non essential reason. That's a key point. I hate the fact that the, mm -hmm. the impossibility of consistency is by non essential reason, not because we're not, there are not enough powerful tools, powerful principles which govern, uh, which, we, which we need to to prove things about set theory, about the high structure or finite uh, type uh, functionals or powerful induction over epsilon zero, something which is clearly known. But by technical reasons, we cannot separate real things from garbage in our own backyard. The weakness of the first order language. So the language of piano is too weak to sort out fake mm -hmm. codes. Whereas Hilbert approach and working mathematicians, they're all, uh, this, all, all, all this project actually uh, came out of my sincere discussion with the real mathematicians. Mm -hmm. Yes? I, I should leave it to the end, but don't, don't you get the following answer to your line of attack? Look, if you're so certain, you know what the integers are then you have a consistency proof for Peano arithmetic because you know what the integers are. Every axiom of Peano arithmetic holds. Therefore, Peano arithmetic is consistent, period. Wait, so that's so a comeback, right? A couple of slides, a couple of slides. No, no, no. Okay. This, this is it's not a comeback. This is the due respect. That you think, that you think it, it's, I'm not attacking what you're saying. I'm agreeing with you. I'm just going to wait. Just wait. wait. I'll wait. Yeah. I'll wait. Okay. It's the general answer, yes. I, I begin the answer, I will end the answer after the talk. Okay. I will begin the answer. No, no. Nobody doubts the consistency of piano rhythm. The only thing we are discussing now, whether it can be done by limited tools. What you are offering, you are saying, if you are free to choose the tools, then, then the consistency of piano is trivial. I agree with you. It's so-called true in the standard model argument. It's yeah. not the question. Right. This is exactly how mathematicians react. Right. Why are you Twice boxing yourself? Right. Why are you boxing yourself in this uh, small tools when the whole trusted world is much bigger than right. just this fin tree trusted right. the, the, the kid's toy money? Understood. Why are you using monopoly money when there are plenty of real dollars around? Okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So uh, the language of piano is too weak to sort out fake codes. And this expressivity failure appears to have nothing to do with the foundational limitations of mathematical reasoning, with new powerful ingenious tools to prove uh, consistency and to empower arithmetic beyond its original limits. It's a much more trivial story. It reminds me, uh, do you have time or uh, uh, yeah, right. at least till 8.30, but go, right? Okay. At least. I remember that in, in, uh, in the late ages, I first appeared to Holland and my friends from Moscow, my friend took me. There is a sea defense in Zealand. It was a place where the huge disastrous flooding happened in the 50s. So there, uh, it, it was a, it's a bay like San Francisco Bay. 
and uh, it was not protected when the, when the, the high tide uh, it goes up so so high that there are some several villages were flooded and uh, more than a thousand people killed. Complete disaster for Holland. So they decided to do something. It was a national project, and they built totally cyclopic shields. They the, the, the dams there actually open it when the tide. There's no danger, and they put they close it when it, when there's a danger. And there are, it's controversial also environmentally because the, the, the birds die when you do this. And, you know, Dutch, they're extremely sensitive for this respect. So. Anyway, and the friend who took me say, but nobody mentioned that there is a much more trivial solution, just update all the dikes. One meter up, it would cost the fraction of the real cost of the whole thing. But it was totally uninteresting for engineers. Mm. <laughs> and that's the that, challenge. Yeah, and this, is, and this is my feeling. Of course, the building and Give an epsilon and zero, just a new induction thing, infinite, infinite reproofs, or given given some new embedding this thing into to intrinsic mathematics and proven intrinsic arithmetic and proven intrinsic arithmetic consistent with finite uh, functionals of finite time, or some other stories. It's much more interesting mathematically, whereas the real solution, if you really care about the answer and not about the tools, it just Upgrade the dikes. Look at the methods that you really have already the consistency. Mm -hmm. Don't box yourself into thinking about arithmetic because the original problem was combinatorial. All right, the conclusion. So, arithmetization of PA consists in the form of COMP PA destroys the notion of consistency. COMP PA is stronger than the mathematical notion of consistency. Is kind of anticipated by Gerd and Hilbert in the early 30s. There are combinatorial principles provable by means of piano, like induction, but we should do not admit arithmetization. And due to the failure of harmonization principle, Gerd's theorem does not yield the possibility of proving consistency of tools formalized by PA, because they're in the same class. It turns out, I'll give you the proof now, it's in the same class as induction principle. As a scheme, it can. Straightforwardly, not straightforwardly, there are tricks, but the tricks were known to prove theories. You have to look at them at the right angle and use it upside down. We'll discuss this. So how to prove consistency of piano by means of piano? <coughs> so we consider consistency in its original form. No sequence of formals S is a derivation of a contradiction. We have to find a reason to argue about real PA derivations as as combinatorial objects and to avoid arithmetization. Mm -hmm. In between the lines, if you want to do your numbering alone, it's fine. But don't use the quantifier. Right. So don't quantify overall. Don't quantify overall things. things because you spill, mm -hmm. you know the story. Mm -hmm. You know the story. Mm -hmm. So once you have decided to avoid arithmetization, actually things to arithmetical proofs of consistency ready to suggest themselves. I had a choice of several. I picked the one which seems to be an easy sell. But there are many, I'm sure. Uh, I have to, yes. Uh, it's one more mm, conceptual slide, and then there'll be a couple of slides of te the technicalities, which you, uh, if you're experts, you follow me. Otherwise, you ask questions and then try to. Uh, so to establish consists of piano of PA by means of PA, one has to do two things. And this is very important, because even the most advanced Puro theorists cannot capture this. They try to accuse me of doing trivial things, but they just didn't dream this. So if you want to understand the story, please bear with me one more slide. And the rest is technicalities. So in order to prove, to establish the potential consistency of P or consistency in the real regional consistency of P by means of P, we have to do two things. Uh, two. To prove, given the PA derivation S, that S doesn't contain 0 equals 1. Give the reason which starts with S and does something and ends up with saying that hence S doesn't contain 0 equals 1. And the reasoning should be formalized. That's number two. Check that all constructions and the properties used in this proof are formalizable in PA. One alone, alone is not sufficient. 
Now I'm happy to return yeah, to that's, you. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's yes. right, absolutely. What yeah. about uh, zero equals two or some other contradiction? It's the same, they're all proved equivalent. But should it? Should you not have to prove that it does not contain all of the contradictions? It, one is good enough. <laughs> because you know, because if one, you get one contradiction, you can prove any other contradiction immediately. That's right. true. And, and, a, and a very very that's a false nice. statement, but you know, in this system it's true. <laughs> We're not using a relevant <laughs> proof. Right. Yeah. I suppose if you had a derivation. <laughs> Zero equals two, then you'd have another derivation of zero equals yes. two. Yes. Yes. Right. You could just say zero equals two, therefore zero equals two. Right. So, that would be the so if you have a general yeah. statement that nothing contains zero equals one, it yeah. answers yeah. Yeah. It, it, It's the most one of the most shocking things at the beginning of this line of study. It's not true, obviously, but there's this whole thing called first order logic, classical, in which it is true. <laughs> it's just not true. But I'm sorry, that's a separate talk. But we're, not, we're not doing this in relevance logic, we're okay. Uh, now, to answer your question, yeah, here's an example when one is, this is it. Yeah, one yeah. is yes and two is no. Yeah, yeah. This because is you know the answer. This and is this is a true in standard model argument. Old Alexon's piano true in standard model. The rules of piano respect that medical truth and zero equals one being not true. Can right. be derived. Right. Yeah. Yeah. End of story. Yeah. Yeah. And then mathematicians say, what? what are you talking about? You logicians, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> Yeah, we, yeah, do, sure. we do, Absolutely. we do, but we have to be careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So this is a standard easy example of one is uh, <laughs> actually given the proof, but you cannot formalize it piano. It uses something, goes outside. The proof which we're going to give satisfies both. It will be real, not, not that simple, but not much more complicated. Mm -hmm. It's within this line, that's why I pick this example, because I want to propedeftically to to give you some yeah, yeah. circle of ideas for the real proof. And uh, uh, that, that's where Turing machines come in, number two. It's not, you know, that's not Turing computer mode. <laughs> so we have to do one, and we have to do two. The people, my opponent, try to accuse me of doing two only. And if you do, uh, if you So now the couple of slides are real story. The real story is so-called partial truth definitions. It's a, it's a well-known uh, chapter in the proof theory of piano arithmetic. Basically, it's a partial truth definition. The real truth definition, that's the only uh, case where I knew that I would need the blackboard. Uh, it's a, a totally paradigmatic, well-known Tarski story. That there is no arithmetical formula TR with the parameter x, arithmetical formula with numerical parameter, mm -hmm. which represents the truth of an arithmetical formula. In the following way, the Tarski's condition is such that the, this formula on the given number of a sentence is probably equivalent to the whole to the, this, uh, the same sentence. This is Tarski intuition. And uh, the equivalence is in, in, not necessarily in a form of approval and just true in step one, whatever way you wish. And this is impossible by very clear reasoning because it's just a fixed point argument. And you apply the fixed point argument to the negation of truth. You say not psi is equivalent to psi, so you build psi as a fixed point of the negation of true, because you can take any arithmetical formula as a fixed point, and this the negation of truth provided it's a, uh, this formula is also, and then you're here, and then it's a liar argument, a liar paradox, mm -hmm. phi is true, since truth of phi is psi, psi mm -hmm. is true, since truth of psi, truth of psi is false, then uh, by this thing, phi is false. And uh, if phi is false, then this thing is true, mm -hmm. then by this, phi is true. So it's this Tarski's undefinability of truth. Tarski's undefinability of truth. OK. Much less known in uh, outside proof theory is a construction that you actually can do it for the formulas of limited complexity. Mm -hmm. So that's your limited that's, and these are the this is the, exactly this construction. Uh -huh. So namely for each n, which is we can inductively build sigma n plus one formula, 
where the number of quantifiers you iterate, uh, whatever, is limited by n plus 1. This is a formal truth with subindex n with the two parameters x and y, which basically uh, expresses the truth, which is a truth, truth condition for formulas which complexity is uh, in sigma n plus, in law, of course, because it's cumulative. So what is this argument? Two arguments? Two arguments. Uh, uh, inform, uh, just to say, uh -huh. that why is a sequence encoding values of parameters? Because you have to do it, since you argue about first order formulas, it's, they're not sentences, they are parameters. So this is going back to the fact that induction is a schema. It, it goes back. It's too deep. I'm okay, not endorsing sorry. this. Okay. I'm not endorsing this. Okay, sorry. But this is a proposition. The key point is number two. Okay. Piano proves, naturally proves Starsky condition regarding you. For any sigma formula phi, he says that the truth formula phi, the truth girl number of phi y is equivalent to phi with y as parameters, yeah. with various y. And this thing is provable in uh, sigma I, from sigma plus one induction. So slice wise, for each complexity class. Which is infinite, of course, but uh, what what means uh, what matters is the number of iteration mm -hmm. point wise. There is a good partial, a good partial truth definition. So here, when you have your phi, that phi determines the end here that you need to use. Or if you can, yes, that's why I scheme. Okay, I just want to make sure. Absolutely. I'm just trying to follow what you. So it's the same truth story and the same your story about standard model, and the truth is true standard model, but we just limit our complexity points, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Big deal, and here is a proof. Given a finite sequence S of formulas, not an anonymous variable uh -huh. which, which domain is not specified, which can be standard or standard, but the real numeral or the real sequence, finite sequence of formulas. You read this as, uh, which is legitimate page derivation, you can easily recognize. If not, then you say no. If it's legitimate Turing machine, in a legitimate pay derivation, you can calculate n such that all formulas from S as depth less than L. And then you pick the truth predicate. And after this, all you do with this proof is if you walk in the standard model without saying the word standard model. So mathematically, what you do, you prove that all axioms, uh, all axioms, uh, because they're all the limited complexity, they satisfy truth. They're true in this artificial sense. And this rule of inference, of course, respects the truth because it's built in about uh, it's in the definition of how the truth is, con is constructed. And so, as a result, TRA, truth n, serves as an invariant for all formulas from n. Mm -hmm. All formulas from s, sorry, all formulas from l, they satisfy this invariant TRN. TRN. And since the proposition uh, by 0 equals 1 doesn't satisfy this one, 0 equals 1 cannot occur in us. End of story. This is your proof. Yeah. But well, properly truncated. Let me just, let me just and, and the non standard, the standard what prevents yeah. this from yes. being reduced yeah. to a single formula yes. is yeah. that the person you're talking to, you don't know it yet until we come to this slide. Mm -hmm. The person then says, look. And he shows you that this method doesn't work for his n. But you notice that his n is a grossly infinite object from your point of view, right? Absolutely. That's how, okay. Just to and it's sure. beyond it. the original decision. Yeah, I got it. Yeah, yeah. I got it. So okay. you try to, yes. try to scare yeah. me with some myths. Why do they argue with you over this? Let's just, let's I hope this line. Be, be, because it's an aftermath. The, okay. the, the people, feed, people feel not very good because okay. they couldn't find this simple thing. Well, the simple, the truth is painful sometimes. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm, okay. I'm, I know that all my friends are experts. Well, I think it's only the TR sub infinity that's painful. Yeah. The TR sub n's are fine. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a mathematical proof by normal standards of rigor acceptable for a general it's mathematician. True. true. And the constructions and required properties used in this argument are formalizable in piano. Partial truth definitions, compliance of truth definitions with PA derivations, derivation rules, and etc. And hence we prove that all points one and two of real proof of finish proof of proof formalized will be on the satisfied. Okay. 
One more, and this is a partial answer why people could. The truth is that I'm not reopening an America. It has been opened. I'm not discovering America. Right. The America has been discovered. Okay. I'm not reinventing the wheel. The wheel was pretty much known. Maybe as people okay. didn't know how to put it in the proper place and to, okay. and to make it work, okay. but it was known. <coughs> in particular, there is a very, just quite, quite no, well-known formal derivation that the consistency of I right. sigma 1, which is the arithmetic with induction limited by sigma 1 formulas, can be proved with, with the use of sigma uh, n, plus for, uh, n plus 1 induction. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you check the proof of this thing, that this is exactly what's going on here. Mm -hmm. It's just the same story, but I give the contential f and they give it as a formal derivation here. Okay. And this is a very good example of what I called uh, the, what I called the, uh, the deformalization. I took a formal proof and I read it as a contential proof. Normally proof theory, let's say that you have to use it upside down. In normal proof theory, you have a contentional proof and you formalize things. Mm -hmm. You build a number in formal proof, and we are facing a totally an opposite problem, mm -hmm. or the, the inverse problem, as physicists would say. Mm -hmm. You have a formal proof, does it give you a contentional proof? Yeah. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. We'll discuss it later. So, and, uh, well, let's see, uh, you can say, well, why, why are you just even, why are you just don't refer to this fact as a known fact and pull the story because you cannot take this fact alone. Mm -hmm. You have to go inside the proof because um, to use this fact alone, you would say the consistency is provable, hence consistency uh, is provable here, hence consistency take place because I want to prove that consistency take place. But it doesn't work because it requires a soundness assumption for what you're proving from. And the soundness assumption, of course, is stronger than the consistency assumption. So methodologically, ah. it's the virtuous circle. You don't want to use this. That's why. So we, what we have to do, and I said upside down, we have to analyze the proof of six, which is a known thing, and repeat its steps in contextual reasoning, and make sure this is a real mathematical proof. And then you, you're, it's very easy then to consider its formalization because that's what you started with mm -hmm. from the beginning. So it's an inverse problem. So now, what exactly happened? So that's the trick which allowed to circumvent G2. I already said it. We, the original problem was no sequence of formulas as a derivation of a contradiction, uh, uh, which is nothing but general proposition by Hilbert standard, but finitely generated objects PA derivations. And contextual reasoning legitimately works with the derivation S or equivalently with the other number, such as special <coughs> numeral or standard number. Mm -hmm. But along the von Neumann's path, I don't want to put Gödel there because Gödel didn't buy near this thing. He worked on the first completeness theorem, and uh, the second was a side, side effect of the first one. That's what, uh, let's call it von Neumann path. We perform a priori arithmetization or consistent statement. We end up with Gödel consistent formula with a uh, with formal quantifier, and this derivation, the, the, the derivations are represented by a numerical variable which about which we only know that it obey the principles of PA, but hence, it, uh, semantically, it overspills to non-standard numbers. They're not real proofs. It's about something different objects. Oh, yes. I already said this. Some moral, and it's time to wrap up. I'm ready, but it's not, uh, mm -hmm. still. So the interpretation of the second degree theorem as yielding then for really consistent by means of formalizable is misconception. Misconception, which I suggest resisting. Uh, the arithmetical formula is not an ethical presentation. And the only question which I really ask, and I'm really looking at your eyes and trying to sense the input, whether the question is whether the presented consistent proof of PA is, a, uh, is an extension of the PA's finitary standpoint. I'm mocking the, the, the title of the last girl paper on logic. Mm -hmm. Or it rather reveals an unutilized potential of already mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. And that's you answer it yourself. That I, I think it's where revealing that potential. We're not adding any epsilon, uh, any mm -hmm. uh, constructive but not methods which do not fit into piano repeating. 
We just found that there are some uh, undiscovered, unrevealed potential inside piano reasoning which you never used. So I think I think we're in the two. But uh, what what I succeed in build the best of the proof theory people, we agree that this either either of the two. They agree that everything's correct. But then you say for, for them, a convenient point of view is which I don't I don't question. Then okay, you suggest an extension like like Jensen before or Gold himself or some other people. Fine. But actually it's not an extension. It's just the, you guys overlooked a little bit inside your own thing. Consistency program. Uh, to some extent it's vindicated. I'm not sure to what extent this particular proof can can be extended to other theories. For example, it's clearly does, it clearly does work with PRA because of uh, you can prove the consistency of PRA and uh, so you need you need some other methods. But maybe the same circle of ideas. But it's sufficient for me to to to, to say that oops uh, the theory. Uh, from now on, thinking of pro, pro consistent theory by means from one another theory is no longer taboo. Okay. The hunting season open. And uh, this is my own thing. Can mathematics establish its consistency? So prior to this, these notes, no, by Gödel said, can complete the theorem. Unless mathematics is consistent, we offer a foundational answer to say yes for piano, and the question remains open in turn. That's, that, that's an ambition. Now I'm ready to answer to a question about formula versus schema, but uh, um, I just I feel that I'm already abusing enough of your attention. So let's thank our speaker. <laughs> there are about 20 more slides. If you have any questions, you, you, yes. First question, will you make those slides available somewhere? Yes. It's always the first question. <laughs> Good. Yes. At least up to this point, yes. I, I'm not sure I'll be willing to share the distinction between this um, universally quantified sentence yeah. and the schema, which is the heart of this. Yes. Okay. Now, I mean, it, in a sense, what isn't isn't proved in PA is not it is agreed upon by you and your opponents. Okay. Cal PA is a universally quantified sentence. Yeah. You cannot prove that in PA. Absolutely. Okay? But every instantiation of it yes. can be proved in mm -hmm. PA. Yes. Moreover, because that's a delta not sentence, you can prove that by finitary means. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. Okay. All, so all that's agreed. Okay. Yes. So in a sense, it's not a mathematical problem here. Absolutely. It's a question of philosophical interpretation. Yes. Yeah. So the, the crucial question is the fact that you can prove each instance. Um, by finitary means. Yeah. Um, does that fact give you a finitary proof of consistency? Now, that's going to be an awkward call because Hilbert never defined finitary. Okay? So there's a lot of wiggle room in here. However, I think someone who disagreed with you would say this. Okay, we agree that Every numerical instance of CompA is provable by finitary means. The question is, is that result itself provable by finitary means? Studied. Okay. Uh, and there might be a worry here, because, okay, you've got to prove this for each numeral. So you've got a universal quantifier of a numerals which, by the Gödel coding, is equivalent to a universal quantifier over all numbers. Yep. So you might worry that the reasoning which you're giving to show that uh, you can prove the result for every numeral instantiation transcends finiteness. Um, that's where the rubber hits the road. Um, and someone might well say, because you're using You've got to prove, essentially, a, a pi one formula. Um, then you've got to go beyond finite free means. My answer to this is 
Forget about fine trimmings. Let's do the, um, uh, the specific thing formalized on piano rhythmic. So I, I, I just uh, I don't rely on Hilbert as defining fine trimmings. I want the means which are inside piano arithmetic or go beyond piano arithmetic. Yeah, but it, it's, but I mean, as, as was pointed out, the issue is not can you prove the consistency of piano arithmetic. If you no, allow yourself sufficient means, of course you can. The, the, the real question is, can you do it in a finite tree way? And of course that's going to turn on what you mean by finite tree. Um, and so the real burden of your argument is that the sort of procedure that you've sketched is finite tree. Uh, let's avoid talking about finite tree. Let's talk about well, there are, it's, uh, are there tools which are not formalizable in piano arithmetic? Well, of course you can prove piano consistency piano arithmetic by tools that aren't formalized in piano arithmetic. But that's what's no, 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 that, but, that's but, the, the point is, but the point is that all I'm saying is formalizable in piano arithmetic. I don't, uh, and the proof is finite, of course, in, in terms of that we communicate it with this and that everybody understands it. Okay, so now it hinges on the question, I guess, of what one means by formalizable in piano arithmetic. And I, I, think, yeah. I think, yeah, that, that's the problem would be just the the claim that people might make by this precisely that formalizable in PA m equals must be precisely one sentence. And, if, and, and, and that's, I think, the challenge is, well, if it must be, then you've got all these reasons why it's yeah. the fool's errand. Some people uh, at FYM, yeah. some people argue this one. It cannot be true because it contradicts the, formal, the, the formalization principle. And the story. Right. And it reminds me of an old joke when the military men discussing with the civilians say that if you civilians are so smart, why aren't you Martian informations mm -hmm. on the streets? <laughs> so you Martian just, information. Martian, Martian information. Much more efficient. Yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, ah. well, 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 this is, you assume your point of view and you criticize everything which goes beyond your point of view. It's not a real argument. Okay, but that, I mean, the, in a sense, the formalization principle is an issue here. But, I mean, uh, the, uh, the point was made earlier that this is rather like a refutation of the church, church's thesis. So, so, so to, to refute church's thesis, you've got to show a computation that's um, intuitively algorithmic, but not primitive recursive or something like that. So what, what you're doing here is the analog of that. You're presenting an argument, and you say, well, hey, guys, I mean, this looks as though it, it's finite tree. Yes. Um, and it can't be reproduced in piano arithmetic. So this is a refutation of the, of the formalization principle. And that, that's a perfectly you know, interesting strategy, but that's where the rub hits the road, because just as with refutations of the, the church Turing thesis, someone might say, well, this is not really algorithmic. So in response to you, someone might well say, well, yeah, but this is not really finite tree. And a finite tree is important, because you know, it's no, no one doubts that you can prove compa if you do that to anything. It only has bite when you restrict your proof procedures to a defined class. But, but this oh, is your question. The question is, I, I have previous answer in the first one. Okay. Uh, are you doubting that the, the, the induction scheme is provable by means of piano arithmetic, or you're not? Every instance is. Yeah. Induction principle can be formulated in finite, in finitary tools. It's a general proposition according to Hilbert. Can you prove this by means of piano arithmetic or not? It's a yes or no question. If you yes, you're with me. If you know, you're ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I, I think, I don't think it's fair to say it's ridiculous. I mean, there's a fair okay, sense. Okay, okay. Then, then, then I leave it to there's a fair clear sense in which you cannot prove. Uh, you can prove every instance of the induction scheme of piano arithmetic. Okay, um, that doesn't mean you can prove the universal quantized sentence, which is second order, which obviously you can't prove. Okay, so the thought that you can't prove induction in piano arithmetic is not ridiculous. Because, I mean, in a sense, it's the claim that you need second order arithmetic to do that. Try to go beyond these formalizations. Go beyond arithmetization. Try to consider it as a combinatorial statement. 
try to leave it prior, before arithmetization age, and uh, and also try to talk to mathematicians whether they well, doubt. That's not fair. They don't know any logic. Uh, that's what. That, that's what, but they don't they, know, they're not interested. Absolutely, but they are interested if you're. Uh, <laughs> they are capable of answering the question. Or, uh, ask the cute guy. No, I don't ask. Okay. Yeah. Well, or some other people, because they, they of course, if you bar, if you box yourself within certain tools, you begin thinking of these certain tools, and that's what von Neumann did. Of course, if the property for you is already arithmetized property, then you're bound to be within the formalization principle. But if the original is combinatorial principle, then why don't you just go to the thing which box you in and limits your possibility? Because. I mean, Hilbert's program didn't arise in a historical vacuum. I mean, ah. they were still, yes. you know, grappling with the fact yes. that, that uh, of Russell's paradox and things like that. So things which, you know, seemed as if they were okay, that they had, that they had reason to doubt that things that you thought to be okay were okay, really. So part of the Hilbert program is saying, yeah, well, okay, so let's restrict ourselves to those techniques which we really can trust. Okay, so then the question is, well, what techniques can you really trust? And Hibbert says, well, those are the finite tree ones. Okay, so now we hit the definition of what do you mean by finite tree? And I guess that comes back to the question of, well, what can you really trust in such a way as you're not going to be caught short by things like Russell's paradox yeah. again? Yeah. No, every, every, everything you say is fine, but yes, but first, Hilbert actually started with the combinatorial things. He never think of arithmetization. He never suggested arithmetization. First, second, I am talking about foundational theory. Can you do uh, the the proofs within reasoning with combinatorial objects and using principles which are inside piano arithmetic? I'm not trying to say finitary, but uh, I'm agree. Well, let's so the, it's a Hilbert finitism light or a loose version, a relaxed version of Hilbert finitism. But I'm still doing this. I'm not inviting all the evils of the world. There's no Russell paradox, and uh, there's no other things. It's an answer, and it's a trusted answer. It's better than nothing. Of course, you can, if you can prove anything, everything in, in uh, the, the uh, primitive recursive arithmetic, it's even better. I can do the. I'm doing the approximation. Do it in piano arithmetic. That's what people thought they cannot do. Now I suggest they can. Unless they believe that induction is not probable in the other Yes. Well, I mean, there are some differences between proving induction in piano arithmetic and consistency because you actually can prove the arithmetization of, in, of the induction principle. Um, the same story here. I can, it's just two, two more, 20 more slides. Okay. You can do arithmetization, but you can do it constructively. You say, uh, what you're actually doing, you take an axe. If you want to do arithmetization, which is not necessary completely, you take an axe and you build the proof for this axe, and you can build it inside piano. Mm -hmm. There is a constructive, there's a commutable function which, given S, or which is a proof, gives you the proof that S is consistent. In my case, or in induction case, given phi, it gives you the proof of phi in the other mm -hmm. But the same story. So the, the, the formalization of it would be, uh, for all x, if you wish, box p of x. Instead of formalizing pi, say, in sentence, you can formalize it this way. Mm -hmm. yes. But these formalizations are very interesting, and they're, they're, it's a refined story about constructive truth mm -hmm. and constructive falsity, and it gives a finer picture of what's going on among the, the consistency formulas, or Rosser consistency formulas, fair mm -hmm. consistency formulas, things. Uh, it, it carries the same diseases as this one because it has this, this but, quantifier. But one interesting point that I haven't seen addressed, and I've read a little farther in in your uh, yes. paper than we got through in these slides, is um, you have a, you have a uh, algorithmic procedure that um, starting from starting from a number n, which is the which is the uh, quantifier nesting depth. Yes. Um, you can pr you can prove the consistency of piano arithmetic up to yes. say that depth. Um, 
and it computes a proof from the number, but can you prove uh, using finitary means, or particularly the means of PA, that that actually is a total function that's defined everywhere? Uh, that's why I'm, I'm not using this general construction which, uh, which everybody does. Uh, because it's one of, I'm doing much, much, uh, trying to do much level, lower level thing. I'm starting not with a limited depth uniformly, but with one specific input, which is the finite sequence of formulas. I can read everything I need mm -hmm. from this one, and I'm proving something about this particular thing. Okay, even and start, it does require anything. But even starting from that, you yes. you do end up um, you do end up picking an n um, and yes. constructing a partial truth. Uh, yes. Definition based on that, yes. and can yes. and can you prove within PA that all the steps you're doing there are Do total I, well, functions? Well, uh, there are some elementary yeah, components. You can't, otherwise, you can prove comp PA. It, you'll yes. get back to the situation where you can prove every numerical instance. You can prove every numerical instance, but you can't prove the universal quantifier inside PA. Okay, now there's an argument which takes you from every instance to the universal quantifier. Okay, and the what the, the, the heart of Sergei's argument is that in some sense that's combinatorially respectable and therefore safe. Yeah. Um, because it, it, it looks squarely within uh, Hilbertian finitism. Because it's, you're manipulating syntactically with finitely right. generated objects. And if you, if you begin arguing in this way, then you lose to the general mathematicians because it's, and then logicians don't know what they're doing. I'm not entirely sure that's, that's fair to Hilbert because, I mean, he, he says that once you use unbounded universal quantifiers, you go, you go beyond the finite tree. You're dealing with ideal elements in mathematics. Well, uh, that's what here, uh, this concerns the extension of Hilbert finitism to induction scheme. I'm freely using just for convenience. Maybe it's more serious limitation, but for this I'm using because I don't want to change the. I, I want to reuse the already existing tools and proof theory, because otherwise it will be too long paper without any particular goal in mind. But this thing referred not to the uh, this the the general proposition, the consistency construction, the quantifier with which starts with the numeral but with whatever means you take. And the means are, of course, induction. And induction uses all sort of quantifiers. You can use negations quantifiers, and there are nested quantifiers. These goes beyond the original Hilbert finitism. But the, we're talking about the application of the thing in a different point, which is the safe point, which is the dealing with S, which is the input, the original input. Mm -hmm. So this is a valid argument, but it concerns the convenience thing. It doesn't concern the heart of the matter. Well, still, at some point, given given an, an S, yes. you have to, for for that S, um, compute a proof that that S is not a valid derivation ending in zero equals one. Yes, and if you cannot prove that that is, um, if you cannot prove within P A that that procedure you use is a total and terminating algorithm, then that seems to present mm -hmm. a weakness to the argument. No, uh, no it's a backward, so no, this is, the, the, yes, the backward, this is a backward argument, this is a backward induction on the existing S. There is no terminating condition, because it's just, mathematically, it's an existing tree or the existing finite sequence. And I go down to the whole thing. There are limits to everything. There are limits, the length. So you question whether I can read the length of the, uh, of the given finite sentence sequences. And that's what we, the, the whole discussion boils to whether given a finite sequence of formulas, you can read the length of the thing. Given a formula, you can read the complexity, uh, the, the, the natural number, the numeral which is the complexity of uh, quantifier, de well, the quantifier depth of the formal. Fine. If you're not consider this one infinite means, then yes, you're in I'm in trouble, you're in trouble, the whole mathematics is in trouble. I consider it infinite, and I think it's squarely within infinite tools, which every reasonable mathematician would accept. 
this is my point. But I completely agree, if you try to be formalistic to the end, that's what you need to answer. But at a certain moment, this is an infinite regression. If you keep answer, asking questions, then I can keep asking questions in return, and this will never end. And we all know this end is, we all go through the foundational hold down. And then you ask question, how do you justify this one, how do you justify this one? You have to stop somewhere. And there were mathematics, mathematical intuition comes into play. You have to accept that given a finite sig given a formula, you can read the M, which is Hon the complexity. Honestly, yeah. the reading the complexity out of it is not the part that I'm concerned about. I'm, okay. I'm fairly sure that can but actually be done. But you mentioned the, 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 the conversion, so this is a finite number, which is given. I don't see the conversion. Well, I, 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 think, I think we should take this over a bear, because it's, it's sure. 9 o'clock already. No, I, I'm, don't, please don't take me too seriously. I'm more maybe over-enthusiastic to answer your question, because I don't want to shut you down. I want to listen to the argument. I want to play the tango. So I'm, not, I'm just pretty, probably too active. In this. I'm sorry for this. The same, the same for your grand, yeah. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.